Hello everyone and welcome back to Prestige Reef. Today we're going to cover the topic, do you really want a pet jellyfish? Now be warned, jellyfish and I have a rocky history together after one of those little bastards stung me while I was in Australia which put me in hospital. The jellyfish went down my swimming shorts and realising something was wrong I put my hand in there and pulled out the offending jellyfish which was then stuck to my hand. I then used my other hand to wipe it off. I was stung literally everywhere. I know what you're thinking, you're going to ask the same question that everyone else asks. Did I pee on it? No, unfortunately I didn't have the time. Within minutes I couldn't breathe and an ambulance was called. On the upside though, everything swells up, so when I got to the hospital, the nurses were very impressed. I also got to experience the joys of morphine, which was dangerous because while high as a kite, I signed myself out of the hospital, and then after the morphine had worn off, the pain came back. Now if that story doesn't make you think this video is worth 500 likes, then I don't know what will. Anyway, now that you know the jellies and I have beef with each other, I'll try to stay as unbiased as possible. The concept of keeping jellyfish is a relatively new one, with various differently designed tanks for sale. These tanks are designed in a way where the jellyfish have a constant, gentle, circular current to keep them from sinking to the bottom, and they should be kept completely empty without rocks or substrate so that nothing can tear their delicate bodies. If they are damaged however, don't worry too much. They have a remarkable ability to heal from even the most severe injuries. I have one of these tanks, and I found from personal experience, jellyfish are babe magnets. I'm not sure what it is, but there is something about those squishy little blobs which women love. I however have a very different opinion of them. They require an incredible amount of work for long term success, but they give you literally nothing back. They're the world's most ungrateful pet. Fish are very aware of their surroundings and often appear to be happy to see us, which makes us feel valued for all of our hard work. Jellyfish however have no ears, eyes, brain, nose or heart, and they are made of 95% water. To put that into perspective for you, that's the same water content as these evolutionary marvels, the humble cucumber or a Budweiser. I'm sure you've worked out by now that these organisms are pretty basic, but that doesn't mean they're easy to care for. When it comes to keeping them in the aquarium, there are various species available to us. However, the most common is the moon jellyfish, and this is the one I've had experience with. This type, however, won't put you in hospital, and I couldn't feel their sting at all. As with all creatures we keep in tanks, moon jellyfish require excellent water quality to thrive. Technically they can survive in less than perfect conditions for a period of time, including a higher tolerance to ammonia which would kill most other aquatic species. This doesn't mean they're healthy though, as long term exposure to high levels of ammonia and nitrate can result in shorter tentacles, weaker pulsing, a flat bell and mortality. Despite this tolerance, they can be very sensitive to change in salinity, pH and temperature, so when doing a water change, it's very important to make sure these match the aquarium water perfectly. Also be sure to make sure there is no undissolved crystals in the new water. Something else to be careful of when doing a water change is bubbles. Bubbles caught underneath the bell can cause serious harm to the jellies, as they struggle to dislodge them, which can eventually lead to death. Assuming you've mastered the art of keeping water stable in what is usually a nano tank, the next thing to focus on is their feeding requirements. In the wild, these creatures are proper lazy where they essentially just bump into their prey. The prey is then stung by their incredibly fine tentacles which are covered in stinging cells. The food caught around the edge then moves to the oral arms, mouth and finally settles in one of their four stomachs. I believe correct feeding is the key to keeping these alive long term, and is where most people go wrong. There are two methods of feeding, each has its pros and cons. The majority of people try to feed them dry food. There are various brands of jellyfish food on the market and it's essentially just a very fine powder, which is easy for them to catch and digest. This is by far the most convenient option, as you just mix it with water and pour it in. The negative side of this though, is it will foul the water far quicker than the alternative, which is live food. This is where I noticed a sharp difference with regards to survival rate over 6 months. The people that tirelessly hatch brine shrimp to ensure the jellyfish have an abundant supply of live food, which in turn doesn't foul the water quality, also appear to be the people that have the greatest success keeping them alive. This process is more labour intensive, but it also reduces the amount of maintenance you need to do, so there appears to be a trade off with either additional cleaning or breeding. Whichever way you choose, the feeding process is pretty easy. 
all you need to do is squirt your food of choice into the tank, away from the jellyfish, and let the flow take it to them, and then siphon out any uneaten food afterwards. It's recommended to feed them at least once a day, however a smaller amount, two to three times a day, is preferred. So to answer the question, do you really want a jellyfish? If you're willing to put in the effort to keep them in optimum condition, they can be absolutely fascinating to keep. However, after the novelty has worn off, I found their upkeep to be a bit of a grind, and because they give you nothing back, you can get a pretty similar effect using plastic bags or a lava lamp. I hope you enjoyed watching my video, please feel free to comment below if you have any questions, have a good week and I'll see you next time. As always, thank you to everyone that supports me on Patreon. Never underestimate the value of what you do with regards to keeping this channel going. You've all been brilliant, thank you.